the main benefit of MOSEF is that it is um, was started by and is ran by teachers for the benefit of students. Um, so the various teachers and administrators and faculty and staff that have stepped up to lead this organization are well aware of sort of the challenges of high schools in adopting programs like this, both sort of logistically in terms of getting their administration on board um, and getting support from their school district and parents, um, but then also in navigating sort of the, the chaotic waters of the ever shifting esports landscape. Um, there's a lot of um, folks out there offering services and tournaments and competitions. Um, and a lot of those uh, groups do great work, but at the end of the day, none of them are beholden to uh, the needs and interests of students. Um, and MOSEF is. It's for Missouri schools by people that work at Missouri schools because at the end of the day, the only people that really know the students are the people that are on site with the students. Uh, so that's the biggest thing. And I, and I appreciate that you continue to give respect to Missouri and, and uh, assuming that we have a Missouri style for a lot of these high schoolers, this is the first time they've played any organized League of Legends uh, against other Missouri schools. And so uh, this opportunity is giving us, giving them the chance to get to know each other. Uh, there will be other invitationals where the high schoolers will get to play against each other. And so they'll know names like Serenity. They'll know, they'll know names like Cinnamon and things like that and be on the lookout for them and get more familiar with their champ pool. So I am excited to see what happens with the Missouri High School meta as we can do more events like this and get more, give them more of the opportunity to play. Call coming out. First time ah. damage is really there for Fox, but look at the follow up here. Is it enough? Corvo getting close. That's going to be it. Flora going down. Dramatic Saber has to be the saving grace right now. He's the only one alive that can really do any damage, that can really have any sticking power. And it's not going to be so. TJ, Donka Shen is getting low. Donka Shen's going down. There's the reset. Dramatic Saber with the outplays and with the ace coming through for Hickman. Blood probably. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. Coming in here. The Vladimir and the Olaf and the remaining two huge <laughs> ultimate to come through from Ninja. <laughs> as he's able to attack both the members outside. If it means that they're losing out on potential games. Uh, that, that's something also respectful. I think out as is. That's something that typically will come from coaches more than anybody is. Okay, okay. That's the best, all right. A lot with this DG. The deployment into multiple lanes here where Yone wasn't able to. Okay, what are you supposed to do about that? As we see, uh, rest, yeah. uh, <laughs> we get it. You're 18 0 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to maybe make the dive happen. I doubt that he does. Let's say the first. Look at it. It's Explorer. Pops the Pharomancy there. Explorer getting very low. The calling right onto him. Dramatic Saber has to flash away, but can he pull the fight out? That's a big amount of damage from the Bane. You have the flank from Sullyman. That's a double kill already for the Bane. Can you make it a triple? There it is. Oh. Big petrifying gaze. Onslaught of Shadows in the back. Oni T and Serenity take it on the world right now. But Dramatic Saber says, no way, Jose. He's going to buy some more time. He's going to buy some more damage. He's going to get the outplay and the ace from the Bane Master. Dramatic Saber coming out clutch. So it's a little different than I think a lot of people think where it's just uh, come in and, and play video games and that's what we do. But um, it's, it's much more focused on the competitive aspect of it, of trying to be the best they possibly can in whatever they're passionate about. And I, and I think that brings me to my next point of, of why esports um, is, uh, like me, growing up in the 80s, uh, lots of kids today are... are have played lots of video games. It's something that's part of their identity, something that they've grown up with. Um, and by allowing uh, esports to grow and to flourish, um, you're allowing there some things that are really important for them to, for them to to see value in outside of just going and, and shutting down and taking a brain break for a little bit. Um, they can see themselves get better. Uh, they can work as a team and develop strategies and learn collaboration. 
um, and they can find all kinds of other different things to help them um, grow as people. A tangent here, but when I was in high school, I, I tested very highly on in standardized in standardized tests. So I got like a 35 on my ACT, but uh, in the classroom, I was terrible because uh, it's not. I wasn't really caring about it. Like back then, I was playing COD 4 Pro Mod and I was playing uh, Quake and all these other games, and I'd just be sitting in English class thinking about like more efficient ways to rocket jump to different areas of the map, like movement mechanics, stuff like that. I wasn't thinking about school at all. Um, so I think when you're able to facilitate the student's needs somewhere within the, within the, within the school, it doesn't necessarily have to be directly one-to-one -one in the classroom. Uh, you can really start to see uh, growth in academics and engage the students better. Like Here we go, making sure, yes, everything is set up correctly. And we are ready right off the bat, Melon Man is able to get the ball in it's really funny as you see here uh the the rockbridge team and the hickman team you know they they're all friends they always play together you can even see here how uh the cacc is uh the clan tag for this for the basically the columbia missouri high school Rocket League teams. They all play together so much. They're in a clan together So this is really fun to be able to see them have to play each other in a official sort of setting um, But yeah, it's it's just bittersweet for I'm Holly Neal with Hollister Middle School and High School Esports programs. We are a part of the Missouri Scholastic Esports Federation uh, we've been a part of the program since October, and we really appreciate how welcoming the Federation is, how if there's any problems we have, just trying to get our program up and running. The coaches and officers have been really helpful in setting up scrimmages so that way our kids are able to get some experience. We really appreciate that through working with the MOSIF group, we're able to give our students opportunities for scholarships that they would not have had otherwise. A bit low on mana, which means he's in a bit of a tricky situation, but with a few just regular melee attacks, you can get that back pretty quick. Like that. Oh, bounce just in time to reflect the boomerang. And another boomerang. And an F-Smash to punish the, uh, I don't know if it was a misclick recovery. Flame Slash gonna take it, that'll put the score at 14 to 10 FHN. I think his side smash might be a bit stale. But it's 25. Barely whiffing the F smash and getting a little bit of a punish for it. Oh, he kamikaze What a mad lad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a way to end the game. That'll put the score at 15-11 FHN. I'm in Connell and I am 14. Esports is kind of a way to escape reality for me. Because video games are what I've always been good at in life. But, you know, they never ha really had anything to reward you for that in real life. Esports gives me a way to get a possibly get a scholarship for the future, which would really help me since I'd be doing something I really enjoy to get a scholarship. And it really is really good for me to see video games finally be considered as a sport.